And let us pray once again. Ever-rising God, just as you lifted the eyes of the disciples to the rising Jesus and his ascension, so lift our eyes to you as we hear your holy word today, that we too might turn our eyes toward the needs of the world and follow in your way toward Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is taken from the books of Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, and it's entitled, Jesus Taken Up Into Heaven. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid them from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Yeah. What a story. Imagine standing there with the disciples and suddenly Jesus goes up to heaven. You see it right before your very eyes. He told you it was going to happen. And I suppose at that time you did believe. But imagine actually witnessing it, actually seeing him rise. If you were there, what would you have been doing? Looking up, right? How could you not? It's not something you see every day. But think of all the things that the disciples saw. This was just one more to add to the list. Hadn't they already seen things that you couldn't even comprehend? One more. But then the question is, now what? Now what? What are we, this 11, 11 men, what are we going to do now? He's gone. He's gone from our sight. So we look up. And we say, okay, now it happens. What happens? We wait. We wait. Those are words we don't like to hear, do we? We wait. I know there's one lady here. Oh wait, that's her laughing. Who is very impatient. Am I right, Donna? <laughs> oh yeah. She talks about it all the time in Bible study. So I'm not telling a secret she. Everyone knows. <laughs> if we see her in the store, we let her go first. <laughs> <laughs> but waiting is really hard, isn't it? That's one of the hardest things to do. And as you wait, you try to have patience. What? 
Imagine that. Not just waiting, but being patient. But that's what the disciples have to do. They have to wait. So they're still looking up. And what would you say to each other? Imagine the, the 11 of them. They're looking up. What do you say? It's one more thing that we saw and we're witnesses to. But now what do we do without them? Right? What do you do without your leader? Ah, oh, but there's an answer, isn't there? We wait. We wait for the Holy Spirit. And that's what they do. That's not easy. And imagine them now. I'm sure they're very, I don't know, the word that comes to my mind right away is downtrodden. Imagine how they feel. After all that time that they followed him, now he's not there anymore. Can we, this 11, make a difference? Don't you feel that way in your life all the time? Can we, can we make a difference? And that's a question that so many people struggle with, isn't it? I have to admit, I do too. I think, am I making a difference? Am I following what he wants? And sometimes you think you are, and sometimes you have your doubts. That's life. And so we go on day by day. And sometimes we find out if we make a difference or not. There's a story I like to tell. I think I may have told it a while ago, but I love it so much. It's such a great story. And it involves a woman who unfortunately has passed but was very influential in my life. Just one of the sweetest women I've ever met. And her name was Lily. Lily and Lass, Edward and Linda know who, oh, and Lynn, I'm sure know who I'm talking about. A lovely lady from the Crawford Church and a beautiful woman. She had the purest white hair and the most beautiful blue eyes. When you looked at her, you had to look at her eyes because they were just the most beautiful, crystal clear blue. And she was a beautiful woman. Always dressed to the nines, you know, just perfect. A beautiful pin on her lapel, the beautiful jewelry that matched her outfit, just perfect. But more importantly, she had a wonderful prayer life. Oh, did that woman sit and pray. She had her own little nook in her house with a beautiful table, with a lovely tablecloth on, with all her books. She sat there every morning with her cup of coffee and went through them and did her prayer time. Just a lovely woman. And she told me a story once, and I think it really talks about this scripture. Many years ago, she was in one of the churches in, I believe it was Woodridge. I'm not sure if it was a Lutheran church, I'm not sure. But she was a Sunday school teacher for many years. And she was great with kids. She just had that little sweetness to her. Well, time passes. She's living in Carlsbad. One Saturday, her doorbell rings. And now she's in her 80s. So she's a little leery about opening the door until she sees it's a young woman with a small child. So when she sees the little one, well, I gotta open the door. Maybe they need help, what's going on? So she opens the door and the woman says to her, you're Lily and Lats, right? And she said, yes, I am. And she said, I know you're not going to remember me, but I'm one of your students from the church. You taught me Sunday school. And I was so moved by what I learned from you. It made a difference in my life. It led me to live a life of faith. And I'm sharing that now with my daughter. 
And I wanted to locate you to let you know what you did for me. And she just started to cry. She couldn't believe that this woman would do that. And she said to her, I wanted you to know how influential you have been in my life and how you led me to the Lord. Isn't that just a wonderful story? She learned to be there for people, to be kind. And through her tenderness and love, she was able to turn this little one, I'm not sure what grade she taught her in, but turned her life so that she knew the Lord and was sharing it with her daughter. Imagine all those years not knowing that you had made a difference in someone's life, and then you find out. That's what this story is about. The disciples now are at a turning point. They're waiting. They're waiting for the Holy Spirit to touch their lives, to make a difference, to show them what they need to do. Isn't that just like us? We're waiting too, bless you. We're waiting too. Some days we know what we should do. We know where the Lord is leading us. Other days we wonder. We wonder, are we doing the right thing? Are we being present for God? Are we allowing God to use our lives to make a difference? We may not have a story like Lillian did where we find out we've made a difference in someone's life. But along the way, with your faith, I'm sure that you can make a difference. Perhaps in a very small way. I know there was a woman once who said to me, you know, just when I get a card in the mail, it's enough to change my day. Maybe just a phone call with someone who's concerned. It might only be that small of a thing that we think, oh, that's no big deal. But to someone who's alone, who's not feeling well, that one thing makes a big difference. And God uses us to make a difference in someone's life. We're waiting too. Sometimes we're waiting for directions. Sometimes we pray, God, am I doing what you want? Am I being led by what you say? The disciples are at that same point. They're wondering, what are we going to do without him? But thanks be to God who had him. You had him to show you what was right, be kind and good, and merciful and compassionate. We may not have that privilege saying we were witnesses, but we let our hearts lead us, don't we, by what we believe. We were not witnesses. Our eyes never saw him. We never saw him rise. We never looked up and watched him go. But we can't keep looking up. We have to look right where we are and be present here. We're all here for a reason. Sometimes we're not sure what it may be. But I'm sure if you really thought about your life and the things that you do, even a small thing that you did was from God. So stop. Occasionally, look up. Think about him. But look around and see where you're needed, where God is leading you, where there is work for you to do, and let the Holy Spirit guide you in your life so that one day someone may ring your doorbell and say, thank you. Thank you for what you did for me. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in the Apostles' Room. Please stand. I believe in God, God, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth.
and Jesus Christ, Christ the dawn of God, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead in the grave. He was born of the Holy Ghost, the third day he was dead in the grave. He ascended to his head, and sits at the right hand of God, God Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we ponder Ascension Day and we think about rising, may our hearts rise. May we be filled with your spirit. May we do your work according to your will. Lead us, Lord, in the paths that you have chosen, that we may make a difference in your world, bringing your gospel message to people in need. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let us come. Let us come to his table. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so we go. We go to the table of our Lord, the table that he prepared for each of us. And may this wine, oh, I should say grape juice, this grape juice and a little cracker be symbolic of his love as he gave his life for us that we would be forgiven and given the gift of eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.